Hi guys, uh, it's hey. really great to be here talking with you. Uh, I must say I saw the season four of The Crown. It was absolutely great. So my first question is to Emma. Uh, so Emma, I suppose the role must have been pretty intimidating to you considering uh, Diana was such a beloved figure. So uh, so when you came on board, what was your what was more important to you? Like impression or interpretation? Definitely interpretation. I think um, it's something that we really try and um, uh, stick to on The Crown is that we're not doing impressions or mimicry, that we are bringing our own versions of these characters to life and our own portrayals. And um, and yeah, and Peter's writing is so incredibly helpful with that because yeah. he's an incredible storyteller. Yeah. And although it has, and he does this amazing thing where the story always seems to have its uh, roots totally in the fact and the reality that we know, but he takes us behind the closed doors and into this world of fiction that is so wonderful. So Josh, how different do you think uh, Prince Charles is uh, from the last season? So can you talk a little bit about his evolution? I think in season three, we, we kind of see a more, perhaps a little naive Charles. I mean, he's yeah. younger, he's desperate for, to have a voice. Um, right. He obviously, we see him fall in love with Camilla. Um, right. And then we see the tragedy of him not being allowed to marry the woman he loves. Right. I think in season three, there's a kind of, yeah, there's a more adult Charles. And then in episode one, obviously, from the death of Mountbatten, I think that that right, kind right. of introduces this, this feeling, this sense of like duty and having to achieve, you know, and complete his duties, i.e. find someone who's appropriate and marry there. I think he also gives up on the love for Camilla at that point. Right. So I think the differences are, are that everything that <laughs> everything that happens to Charles in season three that everyone last year was like, poor Charles, poor Charles, we're now seeing the effects of and maybe it's a slightly darker version of him, I think. So now both of you have played uh, the character of uh, royalty. Uh, so, is there any disadvantage that you noticed uh, of being a royal that uh, most people don't get? Because we think royals are uh, so such lucky people. But is there a disadvantage that you noticed? I think it's a real poison chalice, you know. Obviously, yeah, I think from the outside we see people who live in incredible buildings who um, have, you know, fame and... I yeah, suppose like historically yeah. riches and opulence and all that kind of thing. But it's really interesting, I think, for us to go on the other side of it and to see how inhumane really or extraordinary the circumstances are in which they live. I think um, certainly in our series, we see them really, the royal family really struggle with emotion and, you know, really being maternal or showing affection to each other. It's an incredibly strange um, uh, duty that they have and I think everyone apart from the Queen sort of lives in this kind of lack this space of lacking purpose or knowing really what they're there for which must be incredibly difficult yeah I actually think it's awful that their reality um, <laughs> yeah. they basically they're born into a job that they have no choice right. over and yeah. then they have to exist and be a, a kind of icon from birth Literally, right. it's forced upon them. And ultimately, they're just human. And there's no yeah. choice of, you know, in, the, in series three, there's a discussion that maybe Charles might have liked to have been an actor. It's like, good luck. <laughs> yeah. No you know, there's no, they have no choice over their lives at all. And I think that must be pretty brutal. <laughs> 